Hi, I'm Will Ruddick, and this is the Village Market Simulator. Um, today we are going to go over the general flow of the community inclusion currency system, um, and we're also going to go through a playable demo of how that can work, and you can actually do it yourself as well. Um, so just to start out with, this is kind of a, an overview reminder of how the system works. Um, we work with groups of um, uh, usually women, um, they, they tend to be called chamas or just groups here in Kenya, and they represent a lot of the local businesses in the community, the farmers, the shopkeepers, and so on. And they come together and they form an agreement for their future capacity. They basically come up with a promissory note against their future production. And that, that system uh, is, is a very social system. They come up with a, uh, essentially like a physical contract that they sign, they go to the chief, um, and uh, it's, it's as if they're creating a voucher for themselves. They decide how they're gonna distribute it, um, and they also um, make a commitment to, to reclaiming it for their goods and services. So they spend it into existence, or they use it on uh, community projects like tree planting or care for the elderly. It circulates and they accept it back and then it recirculates, that's the general system. Um, there's another requirement on this that not only are they backing it locally with their, their commitments, but there's also a reserve. This is essentially a collateral fund um, which enables anyone holding these tokens, these vouchers, or, they, or we call them CICs, Community Inclusion Currencies, to redeem them or liquidate them for what's inside this reserve. Okay? Um, we work with uh, Kenyan Red Cross and Danish Red Cross. Um, and they are uh, helping uh, fill these reserves. They're adding to the collateral of, of the community. Um, they're also able to contribute directly into the community. Um, so when you add into this reserve, you're actually minting, you create the, the community currency. Um, and so uh, this is kind of an idea of like the local circulation, people can exchange it and, and so on. So we're gonna go into a little demo of this and I hope it'll make a little bit um, in more intuitive sense. Um, so you can actually do this on your browser as well. It's play.grassecon.org. Um, and the, the general idea is exactly what I was just describing, where the community comes together and they create a supply of CIC tokens. And they would name these whatever they're going to name them, like their village name. Um, and this supply, this 400,000 here, is backed by 400,000 of committed uh, productive capacity. So that is farming and labor and goods and services and the community the community has, has uh, documented this um, and so they're creating this promissory note and it's going to basically allow them to circulate uh, their goods and services even when there's no national currency. Now there's also a collateral fund and the numbers of, as we have them laid out here is, is a matter of kind of self-regulation in terms of risk. So we actually say that if you want to start with an exchange price one-to-one -to, -one to your reserve here, you must match this target ratio with your current ratio, your reserve ratio. So if the reserve to supply is a quarter and your target ratio was a quarter here, then you're, you're fulfilling that requirement and so you have a cash out uh, or exchange rate of one-to-one -one, uh, right now. And so we're going to play through that and look at some different examples of you know, what would happen if we change some of these numbers. Um, you know, why, why 100,000 here? This is roughly, you know, 100,000 Kenyan shillings is roughly 1,000 a, a US dollars. So this would be, they're creating something like $4,000 of vouchers based on, a, based on their goods and services, and then backed by a collateral fund of $1,000. So let's play that through. Um, so you can see now they've got, they've got their reserve and they got their supply. Now, if I'm just a regular user here, this is kind of simulating as if I had a wallet in this account. And, and let's say that I was part of the one of these women that was setting this up and I backed it with my goods and services. So I've gotten 20,000 here of these CICs. And again, they would have been named whatever the community, like Miani Peza. So I've got 20,000 Mianis. So I can go out into the community and I can go and say, I really need to buy some labor to build up a, a, a shack for my goats. And so I'm gonna pay some laborers in the community currency, okay, and so and let's say those laborers were also some of the people who originally created this, and and they have committed to accepting, uh, you know, each day of labor at 250 of these of these tokens. So I buy some, you know, um, wonderful. I've bought I've bought now 2,000 CICs worth of that labor. Maybe the construction's about halfway done. Wonderful. 
and I can also be selling back to those to those laborers. I could be feeding them uh, for part of their meals during the day. So I could be selling back some and beginning, excuse me, the, a, a bit more uh, CICs back and forth. So this is this is ideally uh, the entire flow of the community currency, like we had in our in our diagram here. This is the flow for shrimp and school fees and you know fish and cooking, um, you know, circulating around the community. But there tends to be a problem with, with just that by itself. There tends to be some level of stagnation if there's no way at all to um, use it for national currency or buy things that outside of the community. Um, and so we're trying to create some sort of membrane or connector between this supply of CICs that's in the community and this reserve here. So that's the point of the reserve. It's kind of like a um, it's like a buffer or a membrane um, that that connects the, the the local currency into national currency. So I've got this option here. I can actually redeem some of my CICs here, and I can pull out some of the national currency in this account. So let's say you know I'm I'm spending a lot on school fees, um, and I'm I'm buying let's say transport to the nearest city for my daughter every day, and I'm spending a lot of money. Um, and I finally get to the point where, look, I, I, I don't have any more, more national currency, so I've got a problem. I can, I can keep buying and selling my local community, that's wonderful, but I still need to buy transport for my daughter to the next city, and I can't do that right now with the community currency. I mean, ideally, we could enroll that bus driver and, and so on, but there's, there's usually a stage at which that's really, really hard to do. And so this is kind of like a bootstrapping. So let's say she really needs that. She, she looks at the exchange rates and she says, oh, look, for 1,000, I'm going to get 996. Now, just to note, if we had just put one here, we would get roughly one out. If we put 101 in, we'd get roughly 101 out. It'd be one to one. But the larger we go, what's happening is, so like for you know this 1200 you're getting you're getting you're losing five shillings what's happening is for every single one national currency you're removing from the reserve you're making the supply of CICs a little bit less valuable right as if like let's say this was a collective asset here this was your house um, or some sort of you know common common asset that the community is holding when you're pulling it out you're actually making these CICs a little bit less valuable Okay, and so if I go back to my thousand here, I say, okay, fine, I'm gonna lose four shillings. It's, you know, this is kind of like, you can also treat it as like a spread on a normal um, exchange to another currency, right? If we're trading for euros or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and redeem that, boom. I've got 996 in my my wallet. This would be like M-Pesa in Kenya. This would be like e-money, but this is, this is your national currency. So she just got 996, great. She can now buy uh, the next day's worth of um, transport for her daughter to uh, the next city um, and then vice versa you know if she's selling still like let's say she sells meals and uh, she sells vegetables right she's earning national currency as well potentially um, but that helped her out she was able to move some of her CIC into this when she needed it and then vice versa if she were to contribute some of this money now back into the pool into the pot here um, she would get 1,000 uh, and four CICs because now the rate has gone positive on this side over here. So if she contributes these back, she's actually going to create CICs. So if she contributes this, you can see she's she's actually increased the amount of tokens in the system. The rate's back at one to one, for instance, right now, um, and she's able to now buy and sell, you know, in her local currency. And you know, let's say there's a lot of people selling off. Um, the community currents here and that's dropping the rate way 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 down well then there's even more of an incentive for people to fill that back in right so the incentive to add some reserve right now is that if I put a thousand into this into this pot I'm going to create 1,179 tokens and if I am buying these uh, items locally at this rate then it makes sense for me to do so and and this is a really important uh, piece of it here is that the the group you know that we talked about these these women here that were creating the currency in the first place they've committed to backing it one to one to the national currency as they're spending it right so they get the 
the CICs, they create them, they spend them into circulation, and they're accepting them back. And so there is that peg uh, to the national currency locally, right? Which is not, it's, it's like, you know, the, the US dollar, when you're buying bread with it, is pegged to the US dollar, essentially. Um, you don't really care what their exchange rate out to yen is, for instance. Um, you know, there is a coupling here, of course. And so uh, well, let's get into that. So imagine, you know, we're redeeming a lot here and the price has gone way, way, way down, right? So it becomes much, much more unattractive to, uh, to cash out anymore. And if you're a business that is, you know, like in, in, in this case, it was, let's say, someone selling local food and selling vegetables that they're growing and they're buying a lot locally as well. But what if instead you're selling imported items? Let's say this is sugar you're buying in the city and you're reselling packets of sugar uh, in the local community. Well, in this case, uh, in order to rebuy your, um, your stock, you're gonna really need national currency. So if I, you know, if we restart here, over and we say, okay, um, I'm buying uh, 500 of uh, sugar and great, I'm selling that. Let's say there was some profit on top of that. Um, let's say I'm selling it, you know, at, at 800. So I'm making something like, uh, you know, 300 shillings of profit, let's just say. I mean, that, that, that'd be a little bit much. You know, generally, profit margins are maybe 10, 20% on those kind of imported items. So in order for this person to accept to sell, let's say she's selling that same thing in uh, in the community currency, she'll probably have to only accept a piece of her profit margin, right? So she might be able to sell it for national currency, and then she might, you know, like uh, let's say she can sell it for uh, 450 national currency, and she accepts 50 CICs over here, okay? And she uses those to buy some local food. All right, then it would make sense for that kind of business. The more she, you know, the more this market grows, the more they can be comfortable accepting it, um, you know, for her uh, community currency. Um, so that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, I think it's really important to to understand also what is what what these values sort of entail. Why we're using a thousand. Uh, dollars ish you know this hundred thousand versus four hundred thousand is because of the size of the communities we're working with compared to how much they're spending uh, on a regular basis so if we if we were to reduce this down by an order of 10 and they're still spending the same amount and let's say we've got a bunch of CIC here um, and they're redeeming it you can see that the price will drop much much more rapidly right and this shape here is essentially what we would call the shape of the bonding curve so this is the price you know, per exchange moving down very rapidly, and and that shape matches the the reserve ratio. So as the ratio of these two uh, diminishes compared to our target here, right? So the black here is our target ratio. As that diminishes, so does our price, and vice versa. Um, if we're adding back to the system, it can still it can also grow very rapidly here, right? And so the larger this pool is. Um, the, the less volatile your currency is going to be relative to the same size jumps in, in redemption and contribution. Um, in terms of the target reserve ratio, this is again is going to, to determine how volatile uh, that reaction is, is uh, to changes in um, the, the reserve ratio, right? So if the target reserve ratio is 10%, you're gonna get a much more uh, dramatic shape on that. Um, and uh, Again, you can go to play.grasscon.org to, to check this out. Um, you can also look at um, some of the models that uh, Block Science has produced locally or lately uh, with Michael Zargum, uh, Andrew Clark, and, and uh, Jeff Emmett. Um, this is the same idea here, but kind of put into a schematic format. You can check our GitHub uh, for some of the, the simulations we're doing around this. But essentially, this box up here is the group of issuers, the ones that are creating their CIC. This is their collateral, this is their uh, committed backing, like their goats. This is like their future production. So they're creating promissory notes against this. And down here, they have a reserve fund. And in our case, we're using DAI, which is a stable coin against the US dollar for our store of uh, collateral value. And, and so that's, this, this contract, this is on a blockchain, this contract is creating or linking or bonding the supply of tokens to an underlying collateral, right? 
and we are basically regulating on our side um, and you know working with the local you know administrations and chief and and red cross for instance that there's also 100 percent backing in commitments behind the community currency so this is created it's dispersed into the community this disbursement could go out in a lot of different ways it could be something mutual credit like it could be um, a basic income it could be whatever the community is is coming up with themselves and that's probably probably one of the more beautiful aspects of this is coming up with how the community wants to envision uh, creating their own community uh, currency here and and how they want to distribute it what's the vision behind it um, how is it going to circulate and and what can people buy back with it right so they're you know is there a guarantee to buy back goats with it uh, you know from this community group and also can each holder of that currency also have a claim you know against some of this collateral and so that brings in the rest of the community it, it, it sort of bootstraps the trust um, in the community currency and de-risks what would happen if all of these goats uh, were to die at least there's there's a way to um, pull out some of the backing now as long as there is some backing behind it as long as there are goats or, or someone's accepting it at some level it should make sense there should be a utility for someone to add reserve into this pool and that's kind of what we were seeing with with uh, with this demo here right so at some point you know let's say let's say um, you know let's say the currency rate is going way 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 down here right um, at some point it should make sense to create you know 1217 in this example right here tokens for a thousand if there's someone accepting it uh, here that price will eventually equalize and that's this kind of idea that there's there's an arbitrage or there's a secondary market um, that helps stabilize that the price of the local currency so thank you i hope you have fun playing with this and uh, give us some feedback please on our on our channel thanks bye